हेलो एवरीबॉडी टुडे आर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज ऑन द इंक्रीज इंट्रा क्रेनियल प्रेशर ओके द प्रेशर विद इन द क्रेनियम ओके व्हाट इज इट इज अ क्लिनिकल कंडीशन दैट इज एसोसिएटेड विद एन एलिवेशन ऑफ द प्रेशर विद इन द क्रेनियम ओके सो एंड यू ऑल नो दैट व्हाट इज क्रेनियम द क्रेनियम इज अ रिजिड स्ट्रक्चर दैट कंटेन्स द थ्री मेन कंपोनेंट brain cerebrospinal fluid and blood hmm? and uh, any increase in the volume of its content will increase the pressure the pressure in the cranial vault is measured in the millimeters of mercury and is normally less than 20 mm of mercury so it is also increased intracranial pressure is also called intracranial hypertension okay so it is clear next an increase in the intracranial pressure may be caused by trauma hemorrhage growths or tumors hydrocephalus edema or inflammation increased intracranial pressure can impede circulation to the brain impede the absorption of the cerebrospinal fluid and affects the functioning of the nerve cells and lead to brain stem compression and death here you can see intra with the in, intracranial pressure increased intracranial pressure there will be increase in the skull size the bulging of the fontanelle patient may have headache there will be a loss of memory and attention patient may have nausea the extension of the cranial veins will be there so next assessment how we can assess assess first of all assess the level of consciousness which is the most sensitive and the earliest indication of increasing intracranial pressure so there will be a changes in the level of consciousness declining the level of consciousness from the restlessness to confusion then confusion to coma patient may have headache abnormal respiration rise in the blood pressure with the widening blood pre pulse pressure what is it widen pulse pressure refers to a large difference between your systolic and diastolic pressure movements okay slowing of pulse will be there so you can see here there will what be there the changes in the level of consciousness patient may have vomiting headache pupillary changes changes in the vital sign especially there will be increased blood pressure decreased pulse decrease in the sensory motor function papal edema papal edema refers to the swelling of both optic disc in your eyes due to increased intracranial pressure impaired eye movements will be there okay and there will be elevated temperature patient may have vomiting pupil changes changes in the motor function from weakness to hemiplegia hemi means half sight paralysis will be there a positive babinski reflex decorticate and decerebrate posturing um, and seizures let's discuss what is this uh, these are the these are the these are the these are the abnormal posturing see first decorticate posturing is a described as abnormal flexion of the arms with the extension of the leg okay and decerebrate posturing you can see here is an abnormal body posture that involves the arms and the legs being held straight out hmm? and the toes being pointed downward and the head and neck being arched backward so these are the abnormal body posturings uh, uh, and okay then the late signs of the increased intracranial pressure include increased systolic blood pressure widened pulse pressure and slowed heart rate will be there next what are the intervention what you can do for that see first of all you have to elevate the head of the bed 30 to 40 degrees as prescribed hmm then elevate uh, sorry avoid trendlen trendlen works position prevent flexion of the necks and hips monitor the respiratory status and prevent hypoxia avoid administration of morphine sulfate as it is a respiratory depressants why to prevent the occurrence of hypoxia 
maintain the mechanical ventilation as prescribed maintaining the partial pressure of carbon dioxide at 30 to 35 mm of mercury will result in the vasoconstriction of the cerebral blood vessels decreased blood flow and therefore decreased intracranial pressure maintain the body temperature then prevent shivering why because it may increase the intracranial pressure which may raise intracranial pressure decrease the environmental stimuli monitor the electrolyte levels and the acid base balance monitor intake and output limit the fluid intake to 1200 ml per day instruct the client to avoid straining activities such as coughing and sneezing instruct the client to avoid valsalva's maneuver what is valsalva's maneuver here you can see see the valsalva's maneuver is performed by a forceful attempt of exhalation against a closed airway usually done by closing one's mouth and pinching one's nose shut while expelling the air out as if blowing up a balloon okay so this is the valsalva's maneuver okay next so this is all about the intervention next is medications what medications we can use for increased cranial pressure these are anti convulsants anti pyretics and muscle uh, muscle relaxants blood pressure medications corticosteroids intravenous fluids and mannitol let's discuss see anti convulsants anti convulsants may be given prophylactically to prevent seizures as uh, as the seizures may increase the metabolic requirements and the cerebral blood flow and volume thus increasing the intracranial pressure next is antipyretic and the muscle relaxant see the antipyretic the temperature reductions decreases the metabolism cerebral blood flow and thus intracranial pressure and the muscle relaxants prevent shiverings and blood pressure medications to maintain the cerebral perfusions at a normal level and corticosteroids it decreases cerebral edema next is intravenous fluids so the fluids are administered intravenously via an infusion pump to control the amount administered so especially we give the hypertonic uh, sorry hypertonic iv solutions are avoided why because of the risk of promoting additional cerebral edema next is mannitol mannitol is a hyperosmotic agent so it increases the intravascular pressure by drawing the fluid from the interstitial spaces and from the brain cells okay next surgical intervention which we, uh, surgical intervention we use for increased intracranial pressure it is ventriculoperitoneal shunt what is it see ventricular peritoneal shunt shunts the cerebrospinal fluid from the ventricles into the peritoneum so next is post procedure intervention what you can do after the surgery position the client supine and turn from back to non operative side monitor for the signs of increasing intracranial pressure resulting from the shunt failure then monitor for the signs of infection so this is all about the surgical intervention and about the post procedure interventions so today we have discussed about the increased intracranial pressure and uh, its assessment what are the interventions and what are the medications used for intracranial pressure and we have discussed about the surgical intervention its description and post procedure intervention so i hope today's topic is clear to you all thank you